What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily, and in this video, I'm gonna go over what I consider to be the best budget 5G phones to buy right now. This is just gonna be kind of a high level overview and brief comparison. I do have separate dedicated videos on each one of these phones already, which go more in depth with everything, but I wanted to include them all in one dedicated roundup style video here to hopefully help summarize the best features for each device and give you a good starting point as you decide which one might be best for you. Also, stick around to to the end of the video if you can. I'll have full side-by-side -side performance, camera, and display tests so you can see everything in action. Now each one of these devices is from a different company, Nokia, Samsung, OnePlus, Motorola, and TCL. I wanted to offer some variety at least, and they all should retail for at or under $300 in most cases from the various US carriers and prepaid networks they're associated with. Whether you're a new or existing customer, these are the kinds of phones that usually have some pretty steep deals and discounts discounts as well. And if you're interested in doing some comparison shopping of your own, I'll leave some links down below in the video description to where you can get each of these devices at their cheapest current prices. To kick things off, we're going to start with more or less the cheapest and simplest phone of the bunch, the Nokia X100. This is one of those devices that's more often than not a free smartphone when you sign up for a carrier plan. The full retail price is $252, and for that you get a fairly large 6.67 inch device that I think you can tell certainly looks like a budget smartphone. The big screen is surrounded by some big bezels, but it's a full HD 2400 by 1080 resolution display, which is good. LCD, 60 hertz though, so nothing too fancy. You get a fingerprint sensor on the side, and actually spec-wise, with 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage with an SD card slot, that's a lot to work with. The processor is really the only major downside. It's powered by just a Snapdragon 480 5G chipset, but really with the X100, I would consider it for two two reasons. The first is the software experience. This phone gives you just the most core Android setup I've seen in a while. You've got nothing but the essentials. No extras, no bloatware, no skins, no nothing. It's super easy to use, very well optimized, and if you just need a phone, any phone, for the daily essentials, that's exactly what you get here. The second reason to consider this device actually is the camera, if that wasn't already obvious. The X100 packs in a 48 megapixel main lens, a 5 megapixel ultra wide, 2 megapixel macro and 2 megapixel depth sensor, and a 16 megapixel selfie shooter as well. Altogether, you not only get all the essential lenses, but the hardware specs are better than the price point suggests, and you've got a ton of great shooting modes and features inside the camera app to utilize as well. All in all, the Nokia X100 isn't particularly flashy. It doesn't push the boundaries with any special features, but for a starter 5G smartphone that offers all the essentials with a few nice perks, I think it's a great option to consider. Samsung's cheapest 5G phone this year is the A13 5G. And this is also probably the most widely available 5G device, both here in the US and around the world. Unlocked directly from Samsung, this phone's full retail price is about $250. From certain carriers, I've actually seen it priced higher than that for whatever reason in the 260s, but every wireless carrier from AT&T to T-Mobile to Total Wireless and Straight Talk all sell this phone for practically free to $50 to $150 and everything in between. With the A13 5G, you get a pretty decent decent 6.5 inch device that very much looks and feels like most of the other pricier A series phones this year. And it's actually more of a mixed bag of features and specs when you start to break it down. You get just four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage with an SD card slot. It's powered by the MediaTek Dimensity 700 chipset, which is okay, but nothing special. You do get a beefy 5,000 milliamp battery inside to help you get through the day, which is great. The display is a disappointingly low 1600 by 720 resolution, so it's not as sharp as it should be given its big size, but you do get a 90 hertz panel, so your taps, touches, and swipes feel faster and more responsive, which is solid. You of course also get the very familiar Samsung Android experience with One UI 4.1 and all the perks and apps that fall within that ecosystem. For the price, if you have to have a Samsung smartphone, this is a decent entry-level option. Like I said, it is Samsung's cheapest 5G phone this year, but if you have a little bit more money to spend outside the $300 budget here, I might actually consider Samsung's A33 5G instead. Just a thought. Now, out of all of these phones, the best overall value here, I'd say, is this, the OnePlus Nord N20 5G. Now, unfortunately, this device is currently only available for T-Mobile and Metro by T-Mobile customers. 
But if you are their customer or are maybe interested in switching, this is the budget phone I'd recommend hands down out of all of them. Its full retail price is $282, so a bit pricier still than the other two we've covered, but this phone has, let's say nine out of 10 things going for it that make it worth it. It's a slightly smaller 6.43 inch device. So if you're looking for something more compact and comfortable in the hand, this is one of the few devices out there right now overall under six and a half inches. And that I know is enticing for some people. I also think this is just generally a pretty good looking phone. I love the design, it looks and feels a bit more premium, even though it is still plastic. It does sort of mimic what today's high-end smartphones look like. The screen is one of the killer features though. This display is a full HD 2400 by 1080 resolution, some 409 pixels per inch, the sharpest of the five phones by far, and it's the only one here with an AMOLED display. So it's bolder, brighter, and more colorful than the rest. If you like having the best viewing experience possible, this is the phone out of the lineup for you. It unfortunately isn't a high refresh rate screen. That's the only downside there, but everything else is great. And inside, this phone gets six gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage with an SD card slot, and a Snapdragon 695 processor. All solid specs for great performance, no matter what it is you're doing. The OnePlus software experience also is, in my opinion, really nice, and as far as the camera setup, the 64 megapixel main lens does pretty much all the work here, but the 2 megapixel macro and 2 megapixel depth sensors are usable at least. OnePlus I think has sort of fallen off in recent years, especially here in the US, but their budget options are where their never settle tagline continues to live on, and when it comes to getting the most bang for your buck, this is the budget 5G phone I would consider for sure. Motorola's best budget 5G phone right now at least for the US market is probably this one, the regular Moto G 5G. Now, yes, technically, its full retail price unlocked from Motorola is something like $399. It's almost always on sale for about $349, though, but from carriers like T-Mobile, I've actually seen it listed for as low as $222, and sometimes even lower than that. At that price, Motorola offers a good-sized 6.5-inch smartphone, whose main perks include a 90 hertz high refresh rate display and a beefy 5,000 milliamp battery. Along with that, you get a better than average camera setup that also produces some solid results. The screen resolution here is once again the lower 1600 by 720 and it's also just an LCD panel. But the more responsive high refresh rate does make this phone feel faster. It's powered by the MediaTek Dimensity 700 chipset, 4 or 6 gigs of RAM and 64 or 256 gigs of storage depending on your configuration with an SD card slot. And on the software side of things, this is actually one of the few Moto devices right now with Android. Android 12, which sounds weird to say, but it's true. So that in and of itself is also a bit of a perk. Across the board this year, there's probably no other Motorola device I'd outright recommend. So if you wanna stick with Moto, this Moto G 5G is probably your best bet. Finally, we've got a bit of a newcomer here. This is the new TCL Stylus 5G. And while TCL themselves aren't new to the budget 5G smartphone space, this particular stylus device is. And in fact, it's the first new stylus smartphone to hit the market in quite a few years. Years. And I do think this is a better value overall than, say, Motorola's G styluses this year. Now, once again, the stipulation here is that this is a T Mobile and Metro specific device. But if you're already their customer or are willing to make the switch, for about $258, this is a great option to consider. This is a really big 6.81 inch smartphone, the biggest of the bunch by far. And I do like the look of this one too. It's clean and simple, all flat with no crazy colors or designs. Obviously, that big screen is best used for its main feature, the built-in stylus, and all the apps and perks that go along with it. Now this isn't a Samsung Note or S22 Ultra competitor, it's your basic stylus setup. But TCL includes a few really robust apps like Nebo and MyScript Calculator, which are advanced paid for apps you get for free to use with that stylus. There's a whole bunch of other stylus stuff too, about a dozen or so apps built right in, and you can use the stylus with whatever other third-party apps you like, from Google for example, or whoever else. On on top of all that, you get a full HD 2460 by 1080 screen, 4 gigs of RAM, but 128 gigs of built-in storage with an SD card slot, the MediaTek Dimensity 700 chipset, a quad lens camera setup, and TCL's Android 12 skin, which takes some getting used to, but honestly is pretty well optimized for this device and includes a lot of great custom stuff, which is genuinely useful. TCL has silently been invading the US smartphone space, and out of all of the devices they've released so far, I think this is the one to consider. Mainly for the stylus, of course,
worse, but also because it seems to be the best overall value they've offered yet. Now to just finish things off here and hopefully make everything crystal clear, here are some side-by-side -side comparisons so you can see some real numbers and real features with each device all at once. Starting with the Geekbench scores, interestingly enough, the least powerful device of the five is Samsung's A13 5G. It, along with the Moto G and the TCL stylus, all actually have the same processor, but it looks like it isn't utilizing it in the same way. Tossing in the Nokia X100, these four phones honestly don't have too much of a difference or an advantage either way when it comes to the processors, and it's really the OnePlus Nord that's noticeably far ahead by comparison. You can also see the A13 and TCL stylus both have four gigs of RAM, the other three phones have six gigs, so that's a factor in speed and performance as well. Really though, across the board, if you want the most capable device, noticeably, measurably better, the OnePlus Nord N20 is your answer. And it's really sort of tough to do a speed test with all five phones at once. And each one of these really do run very different Android skins. So with the user experience, I think this is gonna come down to personal preference more than anything else. Like I mentioned though, for just your core basics, the Nokia X100 gives you just the essentials. Samsung's Android experience, of course, is what I think most people would be familiar with. And OnePlus really does offer the smoothest, most fluid OS experience of the bunch. But again, this just comes down to personal preference more than anything else. With the displays, like I mentioned earlier, the OnePlus Nord is also the only one with an OLED panel. So it's gonna be the brightest, the boldest, the most colorful, and likely the most pleasing to look at out of the bunch. Resolution-wise, Samsung's A13 5G and the Moto G 5G are at a disadvantage here being only 720p. So sharpness and clarity aren't going to be too great compared to the 1080 resolutions of the rest. If viewing experience is most important to you, the OnePlus Nord has the advantage here as well. And when it comes to the cameras, here are just a couple quick sample pics just to give you an idea of what we're working with. Obviously, all five of these phones produce vastly different images. The color, contrast, exposure, and overall look. But to me, the Moto G 5G and the Nokia X100 actually both produce the most natural and detailed looking shots. OnePlus, for whatever reason, tends to over beautify things with a lot of image processing. That's what I've noticed. TCL is fairly neutral with its images, but definitely over processed sometimes as well. And Samsung's cameras here with the A13 seem to just be a bit underpowered, a little dull, a little dark, and a little less detailed. Like I mentioned at the start, I have dedicated videos for each one of these phones if you'd like to go more in depth, but these are the five budget 5G phones I'd consider right now to be some of the best options out there. They each have their pros and cons for sure, but what do you guys think? Which one of the bunch would you recommend to be the best? Maybe there's one I didn't mention. Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know your thoughts, of course. But hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.